Hello fellow members of the Esoteric Order of Gamers. It's a bit cold outside, I was wearing that beanie, but I don't need it inside. I've got some stuff to show you today, and that is some new stuff from Parabellum War Games, who make the fantastic tabletop miniatures game called Conquest, The Last Argument of Kings. And they sent me some more miniatures to look at and, of course, play with. Um, they're really nice. I've got one extra one here for my Spires army. These are the Vanguard clones. And I'm looking forward to adding those to my Spires army, who I played with so quite a few times. Um, but the rest of it is for Nords. And I already have some Nord stuff that I haven't yet painted up. So with this, I'm going to have quite an impressive Nords force. So the next time I do a battle report, I'll make sure to use the Nords because they have some really lovely figures. The first one I've got here is the Hunter Cadre, which is a lovely unit. Uh, there are three stands worth of bounty hunters. Then we've got the Trolls. This comes again on three stands, a bunch of fantastic looking trolls for your Nord armies. And then finally, we've got the Ugra. Ugra. U-G-R. I presume it's pronounced Ugra. Um, but that's just the kind of thing you'd have for Ugra, isn't it? I don't know, they're like large, not very intelligent troll-like creatures, but there's three of them on a stand. They look fantastic as well. Let's check them out. It's interesting to take this opportunity to compare the packaging of the first generation of figures and the new generation of figures, and also the figures themselves, because the figures from Parabellum are increasing in quality all the time. So the Vanguard clones is um, from the first releases, or the first wave of releases. And you can see it's quite a thick box, it's quite a sturdy box, and it comes in these large sprues. And um, the plastic is, is absolutely fine. Uh, the detail is not quite as sharp as you're probably used to with, you know, Games Workshop figures and things like that. Remember, Games Workshop has incredible resources, and these guys had to build up their whole system from scratch as a new publisher. So uh, that's what you get. You also didn't get any instructions. All the instructions were online. Um, and you've got, of course, your card for uh, activating the um, troop. So in the new packaging, they've made it uh, taller, but smaller. Um, it's thinner cardboard. It's just thin cardboard. It's actually sealed in an interesting way. I had to kind of rip it open to get inside. I couldn't quite work out how it opened. It's quite a tricky construction. But anyway, inside you've got um, square sprues now, and they're, they seem to be a different plastic. Now, I'm not exactly sure what type of plastic, but the detail here is uh, definitely a, a big step up. Let's compare, for example, uh, this piece from the Vanguard clones. Still great detail, just slightly soft. If you look at this piece from the Hunter Cadre set, you can see it is definitely sharper in the detail. And uh, really good to see this. They're improving all the time, as I said, um, and making some very nice figures as they go along. So that's really good to see. Um, so that's the whole pack of those. Now, these can be built in two different ways, which often happens. You can build these as uh, longbow men or as guys with crossbows. So you've got those. And then um, the other thing is that the uh, activation cards just come loose in there now. They used to come in a plastic bag, but now they're just loose. But we do have the addition of a sheet of instructions, which is really good to see. And uh, saves me going online and checking it out. And they also seem to be a little bit more detailed uh, than before. The instructions uh, were quite basic, uh, the online ones. And these ones uh, are longer and more detailed and show you the various variants. These are the normal troops. You can do variations on that. And then you've got the commander and the banner man. So that's really good to see. They put instructions in the box, which is great. Another thing I'd like to show you is how I magnetize all my conquest bases. Now, when I first started playing the game, I would put figures uh, on the base and I'd stick them there with a bit of blue tack. But of course, during the game, you pull them off and you have to, the bit of blue tack comes stringing off and it's just not very handy. So I decided to magnetize them all. And for that, I'm using these magnets. These are rare earth magnets. And these ones are six millimeters in diameter and one millimeter in height. Now make sure you get good quality rare earth magnets because uh, there are some places that sell them on eBay that are sort of cheap ones that aren't as strong. So I get these from a dedicated magnet store online here in New Zealand. So make sure you get the good ones. So I've got a few of those. Also be very careful with magnets. They can be dangerous. 
You don't want small children or pets or anything swallowing them, so always take a lot of care when you're using magnets. So here's my normal stand and four bases for figures that are going to go into it. Now I try and keep all the polarities of all the figures that I do the same, so uh, I make sure that any figure can go into a base. So I use one that I've already done, and I know is the same throughout all my figures, and I'll get a new magnet, like so, pop it on there, and then I'll get a permanent marker and just mark one side of it. So this allows me to remember that when that goes onto the stand like that, the black dot will go down. You have to be really careful you get your polarities right because once they're super glued on, it can be a pain to get them off and change it. So I do that four times. Just put the magnets down with some space um, around them so they don't flip together. Okay, so remember the black dot is going down onto the main stand. Then I get myself some super glue, whatever brand you like. And doing these two at a time, I put a dot right in the center. And then I take these magnets and carefully place them in the center. Just eyeballing it. Make sure that's there. Making sure that black dot is facing down. There we go. And then I'll do the next two. I'm just sliding it off the edge of the mat so I can pick it up easily. With super glue, I tend to leave it to dry overnight. I know it dries a lot faster than that, but I just do that to make sure it's absolutely solid. Um, you don't necessarily have to do it. So there you go. Now the next thing is to do the bases themselves. And this is a little bit trickier because unfortunately, Parabellum bases have on the underside this little knob which is obviously part of the manufacturing process. And it also leaves a divot in the center. So I have to get rid of this knob so I have a, a flat surface in the middle. And for that, I use a little needle file like this, and this one's got a flat end. And I'll just basically scrub out that, that knob. This from a few angles. And make sure this area is flat. Off the excess plastic and also it leaves a nice scored surface so it can really take when it glues there. So that's flat now. And then I do the same thing. So here's my, my base uh, that I'd already done before. I take the magnet, pop it on there. Now this time I have to remember that the black dot is going to be facing outward as it is on this base. So I go through all of these, put a dot of super glue in the center, take my magnet, and this time the black dot is showing, like so. Then I let those dry, I do a whole heap of those, and as you can see I've done a whole lot of them previously, here they are like this, and the bases will fit beautifully in there. Now I've got to get that out, usually <laughs> Usually there's a figure on top of that, so it's very easy to get out, like so. So for example, here they are, and in this case for the large figures and just one stand, I've just got one magnet, and that sits in there beautifully, look at that. It's really easy to take your casualties out, and you're not disturbing your stands on the battlefield or anything like that. It works perfectly as a system, so... Highly recommend you do that. Obviously it takes a little bit of extra time, but it's really worth doing. The other great thing about this method is that banners don't uh, overtopple. Even if they're quite top heavy, they'll stay in place, no problems at all. Right, let's have a look at two of those units all made up. Here are my Vanguard clones, and they look just lovely. Now, of course, when you're setting up your units and building them, make sure you just check to see that everything ranks up okay, because there are a lot of swords and limbs and shields and banners and things poking out. You want to make sure that the uh, stands fit together nicely. And that's a very dynamic unit, as you can see. There's a lot of running, charging, threatening looking clones there. And then over here we have the Hunter Kadra. And I love this unit. This is really nice. Uh, we've got the crossbowmen. I've set it up as the crossbowmen. A very nice banner. This guy's got a bit of a Grand Inquisitor feel. I love the fact he's holding this scroll here as though he's about to, to claim some right to kill you on the battlefield. And very nice models, these ones. Love this unit. The Ugg. Love that name. 
and you can see they're big chunky figures and you know they're really fun figures I think to have on the table because you bring out something like this and your opponent immediately goes oh no they're not amazing figures I've got to say the, when it comes to detail uh, the joins here are a little bit rough the bodies join a bit roughly together there's not a huge um, lot of variety you can do pose wise actually I improved the pose on this one a bit because I wanted him to be grabbing the axe handle so I actually chopped his hand off and twisted it around to say he was grabbing it in that position so you can do a few things like that to just to make the poses a bit more interesting this one is naturally designed so the hammer rests on his shoulder which is great but the rest of the figure is pretty static there's just two big feet but then again these are pretty static guys as you can see they're big and solid and you know they're not going to be twisting and turning around too much with that bulk so the detail on the back and front is great it was only just really where the straps joined up on the side but you can hide those with some extra details for example these hanging heads here are really nice um, and these just fit on they just glue on and the straps don't actually fit to any existing straps so not masterpieces at all but these are play pieces this is the thing you know you're not really painting these for display you're painting these to play the tabletop game so that doesn't bother me in the slightest and I think these have great presence on the tabletop they'll be great when they're painted up so all in all very very happy with the erg now I painted these relatively quickly using contrast paints um, and doing just a, a quick metal with um, an agrax earth shade wash and a bit of silver highlighting but i really haven't spent ages and ages on these and they still come up really nicely even uh, on all the straps and everything just a quick highlight but for tabletop standard i think these look fantastic and really threatening models great stuff the trolls are very easy to put together there's four different bodies and they match the backs uh, the fronts match the backs there's a little motif on either each that you can match to see which body goes with what. So this one has this rune on it. This one is into skulls. This one has keys hanging from its belt. And this one has interlinked chains. So it's very easy to work out which ones fit with which. And there you've got the bodies. And then there's a whole assortment of weapons and arms. And finally, here we have our very impressive troll unit. And these are some really imposing figures, quite scary. Again, I've painted these up to fast tabletop standard, which means I've used Citadel contrast paints and done very quick highlighting. I mean, really, you could spend ages and ages putting more detail into these. The detail is there on the figures, but I think this looks great for getting on the table and playing. Um, I'm making my Nord army up at the moment, so I've got a lot of uh, raiders and stalkers to paint, so I want to get these done pretty quickly. But uh, a beautiful looking unit. I love the trolls, and apparently they're really effective on the tabletop as well. That's it folks, some new units for Conquest, the last argument of kings, and some tips on how to magnetize your Conquest miniatures. Thanks very much for watching, this is the Esoteric Order of Gamers. Go to the website at orderofgamers.com and be sure to download my rules summary and reference for Conquest. It'll make playing the game easier and it's updated for the latest version of the rules. Bye for now and have fun playing Conquest.